Welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee. I'm your host, Rick Alexander. You guys can interact with me or follow me at Rick Alexander underscore or at the Morning Coffee podcast on Instagram. Now, if you're getting a lot from this show, if it's changing your life or even changing the way that you look at your life, it would mean the world to me if you would head to iTunes and give us a five-star review so that we can continue to climb the charts and get this information to more and more people. Over the last year and a half, I've focused my work on the the story that we tell ourselves about our lives. Your entire life is a bit of a story that you're telling yourself. And if you could tell yourself a different story, you could probably change your life quite a bit. And so I did that work for the release of my newest book, which is coming out in early 2020. But getting excited for that release, I actually wanted to go through a lot of the information that I had learned, a lot of my notes, and synthesize it into maxims, which is what we're getting into today. I've got 21 maxims to maximize your life. And what these are is just things that seem to be true about the human experience. And if you could understand how they are true, you could understand how they could change your life. And so if you go to rickalexander.com, what you're going to find is if you click on articles, the maxim of the day is going to be posted, whatever the last maxim was. And it's also going to have journal entries and thought experiments in there so that you can figure out how to apply these things to your own lives. And so a bit of an interactive experience. So throughout the next year, uh, through my speaking, through my book release, and through these maxims, I'm excited to see how this information can really change the world and change your world if you give it an opportunity to. You could say that humans fundamentally have the ability to think about the past and to to have these memories with deep emotion tied to them so that we can better navigate the future because if the logic is of course if we better understand what's happened to us then we can better architect what's going to happen to us in the future because you don't want to you don't want to be real reliving the same scenarios. Unfortunately, a lot of us have the same traumas that we haven't worked through. So we are reliving the same scenarios, but we're reliving them with different people and different names and different situations. And so it's not so straightforward that the thing that we're mad about today is actually the thing that we were also mad about yesterday and maybe the week before that and the year before that and the thing that we've been mad about the whole entire time. And then maybe you could even trace that back to a fear somewhere. And so you're not actually mad at all. You're just scared. And you've been scared. And so you've been enacting that out in the world over and over and over again. Understand that these are really complex states to get to mentally, right? Like there's a there's a certain objectivity that you need in order to understand how you might be going through the world in such a complex way. Because if you're mad all the time, it's really hard to trace that anger back to other times where you've manifested that anger and then back further to where that anger could be fear. And this is just one possible explanation for emotions that might be coming up for you. And so what you begin to understand is although we have the memory and the brain power to reconcile the past or to work through the past and to architect our future based on what's happened to us, you're actually not free to use the past unless you let it go, unless you realize that it actually doesn't say anything about you, that part of your emotional being isn't held up by something that's actually happened in the past. First of all, if there's something that's happened in your past and you can't talk about it without crying, you're actually not over it yet. And so there's some part of you that's over in the past and it's fighting this battle. And the thing we always I always talk about with my clients is like, But how good could you be if you had a reclamation of the parts of you that are still in the past fighting this battle that's not your battle to fight anymore? You know, it's like as time goes on, like people leave us and people die and situations change and things, you know, we're in this world of evolving impermanence. And so we're always faced with some sort of situation that's just like this. But if you want to learn from your past, if you want to figure out why things are happening to you, if you want to actually architect your future based on what's happened to you, then you have to create some space around your past and understand that as long as you have emotions tied into it, you're not going to be free to see it clearly. And that's the actual problem here. That's what we're talking about. The truth is that information without objectivity just can't be trusted. You can't be sure that your own personal biases aren't creeping in there and you're unable to see the actual solution. And so that's why as you think about your past, it's so important that you have this reclamation of self, that you work through these things that make you cry and you learn to let them go. Because if you can let them go, then you can create objectivity around your past and you can 
you're free to actually learn from it. You're free to actually allow it to change your life. It's like all of the personal development help in the world, let's say, would fall short of you just working through your past and learning all of the lessons that life has already taught you without emotion. If you could do that, then you'd have a playbook for an incredible life going forward. But the problem is most of us think back and we think the past says something about us or we think that when someone left us, it actually had something to do with us. Or we think that when we lost our job, that it actually said something about our character and our work ethic. And very rarely do we have the emotional bandwidth to look back and realize that people are all kind of going through their own battles. And sometimes we get caught up in other people's battles and that doesn't necessarily say something about us, you know. And then in other cases, it's like you can look back at your past and you can really, really see where you have contributed to something poorly happening, right? Like you can see where you've contributed to you losing a job or losing relationships or losing friends or something like that. And if that's the case, the only thing that's going to change that going forward is if you let it go so that you can act differently in the future. You have to let go of the guilt and the shame. And, and so you can see, like, no matter what it is about the past that you're holding on to, there comes a point where it, it's no longer serving you and it actually doesn't have the ability to serve you. And that's why you have to let it go, because if you want to architect your future, then you have to work through what's already happened, what's already sort of kept you where you are. And so, look, I would be remiss to if I didn't give my favorite advice that I've ever heard on the past, which was the the doctors from Move You when I re, when I had them on the show back when it was Lionheart Radio. We did an interview style show with them, and at the very end of the show, uh, I asked them for advice, and they said, "Listen, whatever it is that you've done with your life, whatever you've gone through, whatever's transpired, understand that you've already learned all the lessons you can from it. You've already." You've already relived it enough time. The only thing that's going to change your life at this point is deciding what it is that you want, making a plan, and then moving forward to it. And so I've actually like re-given that advice so many times because I remember it came at such a potent time in my life where I was reliving the past over and over. And the one thing that I'll say, the one part of that advice that, that seemed to get left out that I think is actually really important is that you understand that you have to let that part of the past go. You can't go forward in an attempt to ignore what's happened. And so if you haven't worked through it emotionally, then you actually won't be able to go forward, right? Because what's going to happen is you're going to go forward and you're going to make decisions that are going to put you into a U-turn or a roundabout until you face that situation again. And that's going to keep happening until you work through it. Emotions actually just demand that they're felt. And so when you think about your past and you want to architect your future going forward so that what's happened in the past doesn't recreate itself, then you have to learn to let it go. You have to create some objectivity in it and pull out the lesson. What is it trying to teach you? What has transpired that you can actually learn from? You know, most of us are so busy holding on to these things like the guilt and the shame and the anger. And, you know, in some sense, it's the human condition because we feel like if we hold on to these things that like that makes it right in some way. Like if we let it go, it makes it wrong. Like we're just accepting the bad things that have happened. But that's not true at all. You actually have to let them go so that you can stop reliving them. One of the things that I've said before on the show is that the past doesn't actually exist. It only exists in your mind. And so it's only you that are choosing to recreate it and bring it into the present. But you know, one of the things that neuroscience has really started to uncover that's very fascinating about the mind is when you look back and you think about things that have happened or things that, you, that you've actually gone through, you're not actually remembering the time. You're remembering the last time you remembered it. And so what that means is that the past doesn't actually even exist in your head. It, we're just creating imprints of it just to fuck up our lives and bring it forward. And so you can think about it in terms of that. It's like, man, you're you're fully making the decision to bring stuff from the past into the future. It doesn't exist in your head. It doesn't exist anywhere. Right. We're just we're creating replicas of it to make ourselves feel bad and drag it into the future. And when you look back at the past and you have all this guilt and shame and anger or sadness or loneliness or whatever it is, understand that those things have to be felt. And after they're felt, after you've gone through, after you come to the understanding that they actually don't say anything about you, right, that you can choose a completely, entirely different future going forward. Once you get to that point, then you're free to pull out the lessons that will change your life going forward. Then you're free to, to learn what it is that you need to learn about yourself, about the environment that you're in, about the world that you're in, about the situations that you put yourself in. That's where all of this information that can really change your life will present itself. But as long as you're tangled up in the emotions of what's happened, you're not free to actually learn from it. 
And so if you're following along with these maxims and you're actually doing them as journaling assignments or at least as thought experiments to work through in your own life, then the question is what's transpired in your past that you're not free to learn from because you're still tied up in the emotion of it. You're still thinking when you think about it, it still brings up pain or it still brings up some sort of something that's tying you to the past, something that's tying who you are to the past. And so you're not free to completely step into the future on your own terms. You're not free to look at the past with objectivity and learn the lessons that it tries to tell you. Because every time you look at it, all you see is pain. All you see is, is heartbreak. All you see is emotion. You've got to get past that. What What is the part of your history that you've not yet put down? That's the thing to really understand and learn. If you get there, you sort of take the chains off your ability to grow in some way because you're now free to completely learn, to completely allow the world to change you, which is what it's been trying to do this whole time. With all this adversity, it's been trying to sort of mold you into the realist version of yourself, the authentic you. It's like with every loss that you feel, it pulls away another another layer of the synthetic, another fake layer of your life, and you have the option of replacing it with something real. But you can only do that if you don't avoid what hurts. And so look through the past, understand it, figure it out, feel it so that you're free to stop feeling it so that you can actually move on and learn what you need to learn from it. I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing day. We'll chat tomorrow on Morning Coffee.